question that uh, is often asked of me, as I'm sure it is often asked of you as well, is uh, we are asked a lot of times, how can you, can you prove God exists using science? Or another way with uh, some of the young people that I used to teach and, and people that you encounter, people will say, I don't believe in God because you cannot prove that God exists with science. And uh, that, that's a question, again, that we get oftentimes, I think, as Christians and Catholics. And interestingly enough, I think today's gospel story has a lot to say about that whole uh, mindset and that, that whole worldview. Because I think that worldview is kind of encapsulated by, our, by the Pharisees who are speaking in today's gospel. And so if we look at the gospel today um, really quickly, it was kind of a lengthy one. I think it's always the church kind of preparing us for Palm Sunday to make sure our knees are ready to stand for a while. Um, but we have a little bit of a lengthy gospel here. And one of the things, so just to kind of re, re, review the, uh, the events of the gospel, this man is born uh, blind and is cured of that blindness by Christ. And he's brought before the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are like, well, what happened? And he's like, I... I don't really know totally because I was blind, Um, but this guy came and I heard some stuff going on and he prayed over me and told me to go wash and put some mud on my eyes and now I see and it's really awesome, you know, and and, and then they're like, well, how did it happen? And he's like, I don't really know, Um, you know, and and they're like, can you prove it? He's like, no, and then they're like, well, get out of here. So he, he leaves and probably just excited to go see things, you know, again. And, um, and then they're like, well, bring in the parents. So the, they march the parents in. And you can tell that the parents are kind of terrified because the Pharisees held a lot of power over the Jewish people. And so they're kind of scared. So, but they're like, well, was your son blind, born blind? You know, like, and, and they're kind of like, uh, yeah. You know, it's like, like, no, we were making it up, you know, for the last uh, 25 or 30 years or however old he is. But yeah, they're like, yes, he was blind. And, and, uh, and then like, well, how does he see now? We, the parents are like, ah, uh, we don't know. You know, I'm not sure how he sees now. And then like, well, get, you know, like, you know, they, the parents are like, well, why don't you talk to him? And that way we don't have to say anything and, and get in trouble. So then they're like, well, get out of here. So they dismiss the parents and like, bring the blind guy back in. So they bring him back in and they're like, now how did it happen exactly? Uh, we, want to, we want to know and we want to study it and so on and so forth. And he's like, again, I, I don't really know. I'm pretty excited right now about the fact that I was blind my whole life and today I can see. Like that's, that's kind of what I'm focused on and I'm not really particularly interested in the scientific process that led to this. I'm just happy to see. You know, and he's kind of like trying to convey that to the Pharisees. And then they're like, they throw him out and they tell him he's a sinner and he's no good. And he's like, all right, well, fine. I'm a happy, I can see as a sinner. So whatever you want to say to me, that's fine. But I'm, I'm just pretty excited that I can see. And I think in this, in the Pharisees, again, we see this mindset that um, this intense desire to study God scientifically, you know, as if, Everything ought to be explained simply with science. And what we really start to recognize, and this story kind of helps us see this, is that not everything that happens in God is not contained simply within the realm of things that I can measure, in the realm of things that I can study under a microscope, in the, in the realm of things that I can count and quantify, and so on and so forth, and label, God is not contained in that. He, is pre- he can be, he, God can do things that are observable, God can do things that are measurable. Christ was certainly a person who walked on this earth, and we could study him, and we could measure him, and take his height and weight, and so on and so forth. Miracles can be observed with the naked eye, but they don't have to be. Science is the study of the things that we can see and that we can observe. And God is beyond that as well. Certainly, again, he can come into that world and within that set of things, but he's beyond that as well. And so the Pharisees are stuck in the same exact mindset of some of the atheists today who consider themselves scientists, you know, who uh, 
only believe in the things that can be measured and tasted and tested and counted and so forth. The, 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 those, a lot of times those people are called the new atheists and it's really chic and cool to be a new atheist and you're really, you know, a lot of people think of you as very intelligent and you have lots of YouTube videos and so on and so forth and you're on television all the time. But that's not, it's not new. It's been going on since the Pharisees in today's gospel. The Pharisees are like, I only believe it if I can see it and taste it, or measure it, or count it, or look at it under a microscope. But the man born blind is like, uh, I don't care how it happened. All I know is that I'm blind, I was blind, and now I can see. And I think that's how it should be for us too, when people put the question to us. Again, there's nothing wrong with science. Pope Benedict said that science is this adventure that God has left to us, to discover the universe and to look around and make new, uh, see new things and to, to, to look at the wonder and the glory of all the things that God has made. Science is great. A lot of the scientists, early scientists, were priests and Catholics. There's nothing, the church loves science. But again, when we, when we only limit ourselves to the things of science, and when we say, I only believe in the things that I can observe and taste and test and measure and quantify and count and experiment on, that's not, that's not intelligent. That's limiting ourselves to, a, very, to a, a, a subset of the larger picture that is human life. You know, no one ever says, like, if you ever meet an atheist, you know, you just... This, a new atheist, says, I only believe in things that I can prove with science, we would always say, well, do you love anyone? Yes. Okay, we'll prove it with science. I can't. Of course you can't. Because love transcends and is beyond the studyable, is beyond the measurable, is beyond science. And so we have to understand, and all of us are healthier for understanding what the role science has in the larger reality of human life. I think again of Cardinal George, uh, who was uh, the, the Cardinal of Chicago. He experienced a very similar thing to the man born blind in today's gospel. He was diagnosed with a very uh, advanced stage of cancer several years ago, all throughout his body. And it was basically, he was given, you know, uh, a few months or maybe even a few weeks to live. Asked everyone to pray for him and so on and so forth, and obviously a large uh, a lot of prayers went out for Cardinal George, and he went back to the doctor, and it was all gone, you know. And it's, but again, people would would would, would rush to to think up of uh, even in the face of miracles like that, people would then rush to say, well, I, we can't totally understand it. Let's bring Cardinal George in and and just like the man born blind and study him and taste or test and and measure and look at his blood cells and all of these things. We, in the same way, I think, are confronted a lot of times by people saying, prove it, prove your God. And I think a lot of times we ultimately are left like the man born blind and we can just say, I can't, but all I can tell you is that I used to be very miserable. I used to be in sin. I used to live that way and I still stumble sometimes. I still fall. I still have weaknesses. But I can tell you that Jesus is real and Jesus is in my life and he's in my heart and he is love, and he has changed me and transformed me, and he still is transforming me. And that's real. And just because you can't quantify it or study it with science, that has no impact on the reality of his realness and his presence in my heart. And so we pray for those people whose views are limited by simply trusting the things that they can see and measure and study. And we pray that more people may be open to the whole realm of human experience, the whole realm that is love, the whole realm that is God. May their hearts be changed. May our hearts continue to be changed by Christ's presence dwelling in us.